The only thing worse than a day of rage is a day of outrage because it's not action. It is not action to be outraged. So this is a video that's asking for a call to action. If you, no matter where you sit, no matter where you are, you have to be, especially if you're a Christian, somebody who defends the Jewish people. If you're a professor, you get it together with all your professor friends and say, we're writing our bosses a letter. And that letter is going to say that there has to be a new policy in place where these kids who are running around this university with these Palestine flags, they will be put on high alert. That if there's anything being said that's associated with those flags flying that are talking about the extermination of other human beings, we will not go back and serve this university. All of us. We will not serve this university anymore. We are not going back to work until there's a policy in place. And if they cross that line one time with that flag fl flying, they will never be able to fly that flag again because it's associated with people who hate others and want them exterminated. The surrounding countries around Israel does not have Jewish people in it. There's no Jewish people in the surrounding countries. They're not allowed to live there, right? Well, not many. Whereas Israel itself has Arabs in it. So clearly, this world claiming this nonsense about Jewish people stomping other people into the ground, it's just not true. They're defending themselves. They're protecting themselves. They're allowed to do that. They put down the guns and people will exterminate them. Clearly, you can see what's happening in the streets in every single city. So this video is a call to fellow Christians. If you've always wondered how it happened, certain times in history, good peaceful people peacefully coexisted and lived next to an extermination of their neighbor and you think to yourself I don't know how that's possible I don't know how a peaceful people everyday folks normal people not people trained in the way of exterminating others could actually live exist breathe go to sleep and wake up knowing their neighbor is being pulled out of their home and being brought down to where and just just disappearing even just disappearing we don't really know where they're going even if they didn't know the whole story it doesn't matter you you can't help but wonder how do you live with yourself how are you able to uh, coexist in that reality i thought it i've thought it a lot and here we sit there are major major marches in almost every city major city and it's disturbing because they are saying the quiet part out loud. They're saying they want Jewish people to be exterminated. There's there's video after video of this. But it's also taught me something else outside the fact that outrage is not it. It has to be action. It has to be equal to this professor example. See, there has to be something in place or we don't go back to work. And that thing better be written in and that better be acted upon because we will not go back to work and this is just one example of of many things you could do depending on where you sit on i can't go through all these examples of where you could be sitting i have no idea my thing here today is i believe the most dangerous person right now is not the people marching in the streets no i don't think so i don't think the most dangerous people right now are the ones who are calling upon a day of jihad i don't think so i think they're weak i think they're cowards you know who i think the most dangerous person is the person who does nothing, the person who acts like it's not happening, the person who chooses not to see, the person who says, it's not my business, the one who walks by and says, I'm just going to live my everyday life, I really don't care, those people are saying people should be exterminated. I guess if there were like-minded people like me, I don't know, I, mean, I don't know what other people think, but I would hope that somebody would create a, a barrier around the protesters and lock arms in rows, call the police, and make sure every single person in that protest was arrested. And make sure it didn't grow after it was, you know, because I'm talking about these universities. I, this is my only example, because these huge cities, I don't understand. I don't understand. The thing is, I understand why people are sad for the Palestine people. I've, I've written about it under my video. I It's not lost on me. But neither is what Hamas does to them. They are human beings. There was a real problem there, and the fact that nobody wanted to look at what was happening inside Pal Palestine, the fact that people are brainwashed into hatred and their heart does actually get get uh, hard and cold because of the starvation, because of the brutality that happens 
in some place like Palestine? No, it's horrible that's happening to the people. It's 100% horrible. And the thing is, the other countries won't take them in. It, the other countries will not take them in. Egypt will not take them in. So my beef right now, what I'm focusing on, because there's many different t sides to this, it's so horrible, is the fact that it's people who do nothing that allow for this cancer to grow. It's people who do not care. This is a perfect opportunity. And I'm not talking about, oh, we can, you know, find these Jewish folks and reach out and, and tell them about the truth of Jesus Christ. Listen, one of my favorite stories is from a professor at the University of Minnesota. And it, there was this book, and it was just a small little um, soft cover book. And he had his art on one side, and he had his story, his childhood story, what he went through through the Holocaust on the other side. You can't really find this anywhere. I looked for this book, I held it in my hand, and I ended up giving it away to the local, um, to the local synagogue near my, my place because they were just vandalized, and I wanted to gift them something and let them know that the, there are fellow, fellow Christians that cared. So anyhow, I, in this book, the thing that struck me interesting is his sister was raised by Catholics, you know, who took her in, and he was raised by neighbors who were Christians, and he spoke of how they allowed him to practice his traditions, how they didn't push upon him their ideas of about Jesus Christ, and they actually engaged him in trying to learn, and they appreciated what his traditions were. And then I listen to these people on microphones right now, these, these people in the marches, and they are going on about how they're going to shove their their religion of peace down our throats and how every home is going to know this religion of peace and I just go to my I just can't help but think that sounds like like that doesn't make sense you know so this is a perfect opportunity for us to demonstrate you know who the Holy Spirit is and who Jesus is for us by laying down our life for our brothers and sisters uh, who are Jewish um, or Jews this is a perfect opportunity to do that in action I'm not talking about pushing our concepts or ideas upon them I think there's something very precious about offering a prayer offering a hand up without needing to be like these religion of peace they're shoving things down people's throats but there is an opportunity in fellowship here just like this judo christian fellowship thing that's always been happening this is a perfect time for us to bond and to reach out are if you're at a local church are you is your local church reaching out to your local synagogue to your local jewish folks are you reaching out to, the, to them and saying hey is everything okay are you are you doing okay do you know that we're here do they know that you that you're watching and that you're being um, careful for them and that if they need something they can count on you are you just reaching out you could just be the everyday person you don't have to be Christian to do this you know and just say if you know a local Jewish area you can gift things you don't have to speak to anybody I, I would give things and not speak to people because I thought it was rude because I didn't want to like interfere with what they're doing um, so I would just leave stuff at their door so maybe this is what the action is. If you can't be that university professor who gathers out together and says, hey, we're not going back to university until there's a new policy in place. If you're not able to be the, the um, I don't know, CEO of whatever company that I don't, I don't own, then maybe you could be the person who leaves quilts, um, notes, baskets at your local Jewish people's gathering and tell them that they're not alone. This is Lord Jesus Christ's King forever. May God be with you.